In today's video, we're going to learn how to create this particular yin-yang using mathematical functions in the shader editor. In your default scene, we're going to get rid of the default cube by tapping X and deleting it. Then we're going to add in a circle. Now when you add in this circle, you can directly change the number of vertices over here to give it a better resolution. Or you can just press Ctrl 2 to give it a subdivision of level 2. Then you can go into the modifiers tab. With the circle selected, hit Ctrl 2 to give it a subdivision of level 2. Then in the modifiers tab, you can just apply it. Hit the tab key to go into edit mode and just tap F to fill everything. So by default, all of the edges are selected, which is why this works. If your edges are not selected, select all your edges and then tap F to fill it. Now we can go back into object mode and switch to the rendered view. Now the rest of the effect is going to be using shading on this particular circle that we have. So we can hit 7 in the numpad to go into the top view. We can open a new panel by just dragging from the joint of two windows. Now we can go here and switch this to the shader editor. Tap N to remove this and create a new material for this. Once you have a new material, the idea is to figure out how we can create what we need. So first thing that we require is a separation of two colors, black and white. So let's search for a gradient texture and then let's hit Control shift click this to see what the gradient texture looks like. So right now the gradient is starting from somewhere beyond the circle. So we know that we have to change the coordinates so we can Control T on this with the node render switched on to get the texture coordinate and mapping nodes and change it from the generated coordinates to the object coordinates so that it comes to the center. Now it's a gradient. We can change the gradient using either a color wrap or by using a less than or greater than node. So in this particular case, let's use a greater than node. So we have to search for the math node, plug it in and change the type from add to greater than and then change the threshold from 0.5 to 0. So once we have this separation, we can go ahead and just hit these little arrow keys to make this smaller. Now we can just shift D this to get the next set. What do we require now? We require a circle of white over here and a circle of black down here. So to get the circle of white, let's just take this and control, give it the same object coordinates into the mapping node. Control shift click this greater than and see that we're currently getting the same thing. So now instead of having a linear gradient, we can select a spherical gradient and there we have to change the greater than. And you can see you can change the values to get different amounts. So right now if we say greater than 0 0.5, it'll be half the size of the circle. We now need this half circle to actually move up. We can do that from the mapping node. So we can change the y location to minus 0 0.5. And there we have the perfect circle over here. Now we need to create a black circle at the bottom. But before that, we need to add this particular white circle to the previous yin yang, which was the output of this greater than. So in order to do that, we're going to mix them using a mix RGB. But we don't want to just mix them. We want the lightest parts to remain as light. We can do that either by adding and clamping or by using the lighten of the mix function. So there's an option called lighten and we can use that. So we can just plug this in and take this, plug this in here and change the factor all the way to one. And that would add in our circle to this particular shape that we had. Now let's take all of this and just shift it to the right. Now we can take these nodes, shift D, bring them down, and again, plug the object into the vector. Change this from greater than to less than in order to get a black circle. Let's just control shift click this. And now instead of placing this up, we have to shift this down. So instead of minus 0 0.5, we're going to have 0 0.5. Now we have to add this into our previous circle. So in order to do that, instead of having lightened, we can just shift D, bring this here, and change this lighting from lighten to darken so that the darkest parts of both are added together. So let's connect this up and then shift click this. And there we go. We have the base of the yin yang. 
Now we need another circle, but this time half the size of the original circle. And we also need one down here. So we can actually take this set and the shift D, bring them down again, connect the object into the vector for both of these. Again, object, vector, and remember that in the white section, we now need a black circle. So we have to change the greater than and less than. So just change this from greater than to less than and change this from less than to greater than. So now we just have to mix all of these together. So let's see, since this is now a black circle, we also need to change the size and make it half the size of what it is right now. Again, we can change that by either changing the lesser than greater than here, or we can actually change the scaling over here. But let's go ahead and just change the less than greater than. So the threshold instead of 0.5, let's make it 0.75. So now we have a circle of half the size. So we're going to do the same thing over here, 0.75. Now this is black. Is it on the white side? Let's just take a look at what it is. Yeah, so it's on the white side. It's black in color. So we have to darken everything. So let's take the darken, shift D, put this in here, put the value over here, and this color, feed it in over here. And now we just have to lighten for the other one. So let's take the lighten, shift D, bring this down here, take this value, plug it in here, take this and plug it in here, and then take this color and control shift click. We should be able to get our yin yang. Now for even better use cases, instead of having this as just black and white, we might want it to be many other colors. So we can shift A, add in a mix RGB node itself, and hook this output as the factor and then we can make this any color we want like blue and white so let's just control shift click this to see what it looks like right now and now we can actually change this to any color combination that you want maybe blue and green with this you can now connect this up to the base color and control shift click the principal bsdf so right now very little can be seen because we don't have a light in our scene so let's just shift A, add in a light, point light, G, Z, and bring it up. So now when you actually go into the top view, this is what it looks like. We can increase the roughness all the way to one so that we don't get any type of shading from the light in, unless you do want that. You could also just reduce the specular. So once you have that, maybe you could also connect this to the emission and you can switch on bloom in your settings. You can change the intensity and the clamping according to your will. Then you can increase the strength to whatever you want to give that nice bloom effect. In this case, we can take the world and change the color all the way to black. So now that you have an understanding of what are the things that you could actually do with this, you can create whatever animation you want. You can animate by keyframing the emission strength. You can animate the rotation on the z-axis of the yin and yang, and you can do a lot more. So hopefully that gave you an idea of how you can actually figure out the different shapes and create whatever shapes you want just by using a few simple nodes and setting it up by repeated action. So a yin yang is fairly something simple, but you could create various other more complex shapes in this way. Hopefully you learned something and you'll be able to apply this in your own methods when you're creating your own animations. So I'll see you in the next one. And until then, stay creative.